Hey, hey, section seven, mind your own business. Now, if you read the book, you already kind of have an idea here. But I remember when I really, really start to think about minding your own business was when I was working at the group home, as I mentioned earlier, that was my only real job, by the way, so I'm gonna reference that. I was working with a lady and we were talking about love and relationships and she knew that I wrote a book on love and relationships. And she was, you know, I don't know, 20, 30 years my senior. And she said to me, I tell my kids, treat your relationship like your house. And when she said that, she was like, how do you treat your house? And I was like, man, now you can take this analogy a million ways. But I sat down and I say, lock your doors to keep strangers out. Shut your blinds when you need some privacy. Mow your lawn so that you can see the snakes. And I start to think about this. And I say, you know what? This is, this is real. When you treat your relationship like your house, pay your dues. Pay your dues. So do your part. And I said that one time I posted it and I remember this lady, she responded in the comments. She said, yeah, treat your relationship like your house, but don't get trapped in a burning house. And I was like, wow, now that's deep. I got to add that now to my teaching. And so I really start to think about minding your own business. When you mind your own business, you realize that if you're going to be in this relationship, then you have to be able to talk to your spouse, talk to your partner, and you have to be able to work through your issues. The mistake we make so often is we run everything to our best friend, to our mother, to our father, to our brother, to our sister. We run it to them and then we tell our side of it, which is one sided, which is biased. They are biased listening. So now they start to get mad. They start to fume because they feel like you're being mistreated or you're being taken advantage of. And those things may be true. But if it's true, then you shouldn't be in a relationship. If they're consistently hurting you, then you need to love yourself and walk away. But if you're going to stay, then you can't complain. So if you're gonna stay, don't go and run their name in the ground to your friends and family. And so now when you have a gathering at your house, you know, everybody's, you know, sizing each other up and cutting eyes and people mad, don't wanna speak. And I've seen that happen. I've seen it happen over and over to where, you know, relationships, you have the woman going, telling everything to her mother and father. And then now when it's time to have an event at the house, her mother and father don't even want to show up because they can't face looking at the in-laws and the other family because of all of the negative stuff they've heard. So listen to me, deal with your issues in your relationship. Now, if it is starting to get really toxic or abusive, you need an ally. So tell your best friend, tell your mother or your father or somebody Tell somebody if you feel like things could get dangerous, but then also leave. Create your exit strategy and leave. But if you're going to stay, don't make mountains out of molehills. Don't take and exaggerate and take these small things that get on your nerves with your partner that you're going to be with and sleep with and stay with and love. Don't take those small things and blow it up to somebody who does not love them and does not care for them and will hold that against them. Mind your business, meaning handle your business, take care of your business. Hey, thanks for listening. I'll talk soon.